Welcome everyone to our podcast, which is uh, suffering a new remodeling, a new reshaping, and I'm changing the name of the podcast. So now you are going to find me as David Ortega B Podcast. That's going to be the new name. And we are in episode 102 with an honor guest, Marina Savic. And we are going to talk about a very powerful topic today, heart conscious leadership. And I will let Marina introduce herself. So Marina, please introduce yourself, please. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, good evening, Dave, because for me it's an evening, for you it's a good morning. It's pleasure, like always, and really honored to be guest in your podcast. I think so. This is the third time, actually, that we are um, doing this podcast. And um, every time is just always uh, um, beautiful to receive from you and to share also for your audience everything that can pour through us at this moment and um, yeah hello to everybody my name is Marina very short and fast because this is not about me and about yeah. us it's really about what difference we can make uh, tonight with this podcast um, I'm holistic vitality coach and I was always thinking how I will name myself because my background coming from the fitness industry. So 20 years I was working in the fitness industry, was running my ladies only club, um, growing through the sport, uh, being a manager in the fitness industry. So I really helped so many leaders actually to step into the space of physical vitality. So by time, how life brought me a different kind of challenges, I really needed to shift something uh, inside of my life. So this subject today is something that deeply resonated with me, something that I needed to learn myself. And I think so that vitality real vitality uh david it's coming from within so that we can reflect that vitality in this dimensional world on the way that we can really have space to lead others from the heart so thank you so much for inviting me and it will be my pleasure to share um, my experiences and, and knowledge that I receive till today. Thank you, Marina. And I think that we have to begin by defining what is leadership now, because it is not the same as it was in the past 30 years or 40 years. So what do you think is leadership today? What, how do, would you define leadership today? Wow, but Leadership, we can say that it is like profound sense is ability to influence, inspire and guide others towards a shared vision or, or objective, right? And it's really more than authority or management. Yeah. I can say that it is more capacity to create an environment of trust, respect and continuous growth of the, of the individual or all team, right? And if we can speak, speak about holistic approach and what is meant to be holistic leader, so leadership then can extend to embodying the personal well-being. So self-awareness, self-love, vitality on every single aspect that created us human beings. So for me, having those values and taking care of those values, we can really move forward with authentic, empowered leadership. So, yeah, this is, I can say that um, in today's time, I think so that we are going into kind of really big shift in consciousness mm -hmm. on so many levels, Dave. So... I think so that all modalities of what leadership is will not longer last. 
and it's not going to work anymore. If we don't integrate in the balance something that was working in the old mentality of how we are stepping into our leadership and the new way of consciousness of actually taking responsibility, full responsibility of own self in own self vitality, well-being and having this rooted, powerful self-awareness of yourself. So I think so that we need to bring uh, in the balance those two components so we can really move forward of creating, I can say maybe the new DNA into the into the leadership today. Yeah, I, I love that concept and I love the concept that you uh, began with about a vision, about a shared vision that the new leaders that are going to come have to uh, engage people with them and they have to also give them the tools and the, um, the vision that they have for the organization or the team or any other project that they are going to embark upon. So all of those things have to be really um, convey into a way that people are open, that people feel that they are being treated as humans, not as, as human beings. Numbers, or have, as human yeah. beings, not as numbers, not as a, a productivity tool, not as a, as a value of money, not as many, many organizations sadly treat people like they are just um disposable and they they don't even care about how do they feel they don't even care about who they are they sometimes it's ridiculous but sometimes they don't even know their name so that that is really yeah. not good uh, a good image of someone that you are supposed to be um admiring no, admiration is something that is not given by authority and is not given by a position. No. Yeah, I can I can agree. And both of us, we had obviously that experience by by working uh, in a corporate corporate setup and, and world. So I was also in the managers, and before almost ten years, I actually in that time, even when I reflect today, how I was struggle actually to 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 find myself and my voice in a manager position um, was actually exactly that that you just shared with me, where no consciousness that in the corporate producing and working the human beings, right? Like, like ourselves. Uh, so where is no empathy? Mm -hmm where is no prioritizing the overall well-being, uh, mental health, uh, emotional, physical, and spiritual health of people who are working and producing in organization. So when we are talking about leadership, the authentic leader is someone who really inspires you, you to be better. Mm -hmm leader who want for you to be better and who knows and have skills how to do that so that when you come in your working place you love to come on your working place so you love to come to connect with your colleagues because yeah. you feel safe in that environment so leadership is not just about authority but how we are bringing that authority exactly. into the first place, which tools we are using to build authority, how we are showing up authentically as a leaders. And those, so this, those yeah. are some, some of the characteristics that, that you are sharing of a conscious leader. A conscious leaders uh, have empathy. A conscious leader has um, a vision. A conscious leader is having a holistic approach of 
the project organization or team. All of those things are into account or blend into a mixture that is going to create the conscious leader that is not just worry about metrics, about finishing something and not even taking into account that your energy, if you are seeing an employee as a leader and you are seeing that he or she is having a problem, you are supposed to be also asking questions about what is happening because and it is not um, being curious of the private life, but it is being conscious and empathetic of how the other person feels and why is not probably working the same as other days. No, uh, absolutely. You know, I like to reflect that leadership starting from my own well-being and vitality. Mm -hmm. So everything that I believe about myself, everything and the ways that I grow through my life, everything that they taught me and they teach me, everything that I hear and receive as a child, it's something that shaped me through my life, right? Of who am I today? So if we are looking globally, really, or when we're speaking about conscious and heart-centered leadership, we can say also which leader I am inside of my family. Mm -hmm. yes. Which leader I am and showing up in my friendships. How I am showing up for myself. Do I actually know to lead myself? So who I want to be and who I choose to be, because on the end of the day, we have choice. Mm -hmm. So we can we can see globally directly direct reflection of which kind of leadership we have today mm -hmm. inside of communities inside of organizations and and so on right in families yeah so which connection we have and how we actually connect with each other and when we are rooted deeply deeply, deeply, deeply rooted into the ground and into our hearts. And we show up with the full love and the self-awareness and the consciousness of ourselves first, of our emotions. What is the triggers to us in our life? What is a trigger when I'm on my working place? Mm -hmm. How I can become better human being because today I don't feel that we are human beings. It's more calling the human doings. Yeah. And we are born as a human beings. So integrating the values of compassion, empathy, kindness, and putting some joy also into the work, into the style of leadership, being true to yourself so you can really be true to others. It's something that can change the world, can change organization, can change the way we are leading our families and we are showing up in our relationships on any level. Of course, because... So the heart conscious leader and central leader have the morals, have integrity for what he or she is creating. It's planting the seed that tomorrow will benefit others our planet, and also animals so that we are not creating with our leadership something that is damaging us and also our environment. So, Dave, for me personally, I am the person who really lived through love. Yeah. So, yeah. doesn't exist one thing in my life that I want to show up from the space of love. Because I needed to learn on the harder way. So this is not subject today. But I made my conscious decisions. And I will I will willing to make some shift and change. 
so I can show up as a better leader, first of all, to myself. Yeah. So taking responsibility, it's the big time today that we collectively need to bring back the power of taking responsibility for our actions, for our behavior, for our reactions. Mm -hmm. But if we don't make environment for people to express, so how we expect to produce something that is coming from the energies that are resonating from, from, from love, compassion, health and vitality, because when somebody tell you um, from where is coming so much that aliveness and energy is coming from within and doesn't exist in this world, the best, the best place to live from then and to serve from yourself and others is from the place of love. It's a, it's your heart. Yeah. I so do. when we live in from the heart and when we serve from the heart, we serve the truth. I could there is the courage and bravery. Yeah. That, so uh all of all of the things that you were saying, I was uh, reflecting on the kind of leaders that usually we see, and we don't see uh, usually we don't see people that care about themselves that they cultivate their own persona and that they have this energy and vitality. And as, as you're mentioning, they are not even aware of their emotions and the inner dialogue that they are having and that they are producing. The words that they are saying to their teammates, to their people. So the way they speak sometimes is not with love, of course, and we need to shift that. As you mentioned, if we are going to have a new uh, DNA in this leadership situation, we need to change the kind of, first, the kind of thoughts that you are having, the kind of inner dialogue that you are having with yourself, and then your emotions, recognizing, as you mentioned, the triggers, recognizing the situations that you are living, uh, that you are living yourself be driven by and not uh, help you into having a conscious um, treatment for people. So instead of just trying to impose fear or impose authority, for your people, the new leader has to be guiding with the heart and to be a heart leadership uh, person, you need to care about yourself. You need to care about the way you are um, detoxifying your body, the way you are sleeping, the way you are exercising, the way you are doing all of those things because otherwise, you are not going to be able to show up as a conscious leader. And then your vision won't be based on your heart um, leadership DNA, let's say. No, no um, I know that uh, we are living very fast. And we are those ones actually who condition the way that we are living. So what we are prioritizing. So I always was asking myself that long time ago. What are you prioritizing, Marina? What is important to your life? How you want to show up front of your clients, from inside of your soul business, uh, in the way that you are serving your family and yourself. So if I am not willing to find some time in my day to self-develop myself, to maybe hire coaches or mentors to just hold the space for me temporary till I don't get back on the track myself. So we can't change things and expect something to change outside of us if we are 
not aware what is happening within us. Mm-hmm. So any kind of day of leadership and any kind of evolution starting from our self-awareness for living really present, conscious, and aware. So if you really look very successful people, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about very successful people, and when you see them healthy, they resonate vitality. They make time to do their practices, mm-hmm. to, to heal themselves from within, to clean their internal environment, to manage and to regulate their nervous system and to know how to regulate their nervous system daily because they know that they can show up more powerfully, more with resilience, more connected, more present with the better ideas, to channel better ideas, to create uh, on a better and creative way. So absolutely, if you... Uh if you don't make space for yourself, for your well-being, every single day, even 15 minutes. So I love to say what we personally don't feel and experience, how that feels like actually to be vital, healthy, present, vital, aware human being and leader. So if I don't experience and feel myself, how I know uh to transfer this to to anybody, starting from the family. It is not... We don't have not... that perception. We don't have that capacity to do. We don't have that capacity within our nervous system and inside of our brain to guide us to actually see those things. And as so you are how we can change them? As you are mentioning, uh, living in this fast-paced world, living in this fast um, uh, way or style of life is not going to produce good results because if, as you mentioned, if you are just showing up in your work as an obligation and because you have a position, that's the kind of job that that you are going to do. You are going to spread an obligation and you are going to spread um just hurrying up people and making them feel like they don't matter and they are just uh, machines that are going to produce certain kind of uh, goods or benefits. If I show up, let's say, let's take, let's talk about an example, a very simple example about eating. If I don't care about what I eat and I just do it, Uh, out of an obligation, I am going to be really um, unconscious in my habits of feeding myself. I will choose whatever it is available for me, probably processed food, and I will have, I will produce emotions and reactions. All of those my nervous system, as, as you're mentioning, is not going to be in, in the place that I need it to be. So why? Because I didn't care. Because I just ate because I have to. If you are if you are going to your work, to your place, because you have to, that's not the attitude of a leader. That's the attitude of someone that just cares about the money that he's going to receive and the position sometimes. But this is the we... like sur- survival mode. I can say yeah. that everybody is living on and conditioning to, to be into survival mode all the time. So the, the real conscious, uh, heart centered leaders, they are visionary. They are visionary. And they don't so even they care about hours or about things that you are doing in your uh, workplace. They have more freedom in terms of knowing that you are a human being, knowing that you can organize yourself and just giving you the guide on the project that they that, that they need you to deliver. That's a, a different kind of leader because they give you freedom. 
and they give you creativity in terms of the tools that they are trying to uh, pass to you. So instead yeah, of... Yeah, the- definitely, definitely we can uh, see the difference if we can compare the leader who um investing in him or herself and resonating that energy of vitality and rooted into the love and serving life and others also from the space of love, compassion, and empathy. And the leader who absolutely is not interested to grow and elevate into vitality and well-being. So I think so that today times are changing and I will love with this podcast, we really to inspire actually. I I want to, I, I will really love it to inspire uh, leaders and those who will be maybe listening this podcast. That there are the ways and I'm always thinking that we got this life, right? So what is the what is the human what is the human purpose? What is the anyway being being purpose being alive and and having the human experience? So we are the spiritual beings who have the human experience through this physical body. So someone who is working with a physical body on the holistic way. I studied different modalities. So We can't go just one way. So it, we really need to step back for a second and to ask every each one of us ourselves, which world we want to leave behind us. Mm-hmm. So we are already on so many levels on the edge to which level we brought our nature, natural world, to which level we brought animal world and also the human world. So we are on the edge of really existence. So only that we need all of us, it's a freedom and love, sense of love. And that doesn't exist in this universe, nothing higher and the higher vitality and health of experiencing, allowing yourself to remember who you are that you are here to plant that seed. So the business is that we personally choose to lead. Big organizations, no matter, really no matter. It's really about which difference and impact we want to create with our life, with our existence. So when we bring like I said on the beginning, responsibility, personal responsibility, and not putting the fingers into each other so we can really shift and we can change the way that we lead. We can change the way that our business is operating. We can change the way that we are creating money wealth. We can change what we are choosing to belong to, to say yes to, and to create in our world. So we should care what we are leaving behind us, to our kids, to their kids, to their kids, which legacy we want to leave. So I think so for the people who have opportunity to be the leaders, those leaders, let's talk about leading the teams, in organizations or uh, corporates. It's a wonderful opportunity to be real inspiration, to be the new earth leader who who bringing inside the organization the different level of consciousness. Because if we consider that everything in this universe, like Nikola Tesla says, it's energy, vibration, and frequency. So do we are. So our thoughts, our behavior, our actions, our reactions, our words, everything, our emotions, feelings, everything is operating on the level of frequency, energy, and vibration. So the which energy we want to bring inside of organization. 
doesn't exist, Dave, the biggest joy than really, really serving life from the heart and also others. Of course, because you are hiring. You are connecting not the, just with the person. Yeah. Do you know? Do, do you know? I mean, Dr. George Dispenza is speaking a lot about the heart coherence, and mm -hmm. it's something that also I'm working with with my clients because obviously, obviously, this is this is this is my niche: uh, awakening the voice, your voice within you, within your body, so you can really become that leader. The our magnetic field of our heart is a 5,000 times powerful and stronger than magnetic field of our brain. Mm -hmm. So I respect that we need logically to make decisions. Obviously, we have the mental body, we have the physical body, and we have the spiritual body, which they say that that is the heart seed of the soul. And the heart have oven uh, uh, brain. So the more information is coming from our heart to our brain than from brain to our heart. So when we are making decisions, when we are judging others, when we are not creating the safe space compassionately for others to really show their potential, their skills, their uniqueness inside of the organization, I'm talking also about family, friendships, no matter. So we can ask ourselves, actually, what, how I'm conditioned in my heart, where I actually close the door. So this energy doesn't really circulating properly. properly. Yeah, that's the vision that we should try to so, express. So how we, yeah, how we can have capacity to see if somebody needs our support on our help or just you to be a listener in that moment, just to practice to listen to somebody. If you are disconnected from yourself, if your life is just on autopilot, if your life is just how somebody tell you how things need to be just one way, mm -hmm. because we are conditioned also to live in, in the fear, to respond from the fear, to create from the fear. So we are leading from the fear. Yeah. And I think that those times are shifting and changing because a lot of a lot of leaders becoming aware also of what is the real wealth. Of course. And what is authentic leadership? I mean, if, if you cannot inspire somebody and, as and aspire to inspire someone, mm -hmm. so why you're choosing? To be on that position what is the what is the goal and so, it all starts with the connection it all starts with this connection of recognizing that we are not separate that we, we are, are vibrating not. in the same field that we're vibrating in the same um soul frequency and if we share that message that's where we open the doors of living with a heart and yes. connecting with our hearts with other people, just like we are doing right now. I mean, this podcast is just made for people to reflect. It's just made for people to have more wisdom into something. It's made from our heart to the heart of the people that is going to listen to it. Yeah, it doesn't have any other purpose of um, business purpose it has no. just a connection purpose so that people can open themselves reflect if we have an environment in a company in an organization that spreads an environment where we are together where we need to help each other where we need to be held accountable for everything that happens with us, that is a, a family. That is a nuclear uh, family that we are creating in an organization. And that moves by itself because it has the energy of the heart and it has the connection of the soul 
of many of the people that are going to be around in this organization. So that that for me is a vision that I would love to see in every company. And if we spread that vision and, and, and if those companies produce whatever they produce, everything is going to be created from a conscious space. So we are going to expand. Dave, till we are speaking, I'm just I'm just uh, listening and thinking. I wish I am also the the, the breathmaster coach. <laughs> so I wish every organization to integrate, you know, just to bring people to start to breathe consciously. So just yeah. that can make massive difference. Because That's- I know how that shifted my life completely. So. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there is so much beautiful opportunities because we can we can really um, utilize beautifully empathy, compassion, and authentic care for others, right? As a guiding principles. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this kind of leadership will dissolve traditional hierarchy, right? And hierarchy structure. And will make really space to, and for decisions, found in a mutual respect, understanding, which is not so lately really based on authority or rank. Exactly. Or the social norms. How we will be accepted and what is a good, what is a bad. So I think so we need to shift a little bit those norms. And finally, and like I said, we can't change system if from the top, Course. We don't have leaders who actually are willing to invest of showing up as a as a heart center leaders who are not just logical, but also for the change a little bit to go down into the heart and make decisions from the heart and and perceive and respect others from the heart. What would be the routine of a conscious? heart leader what would encompass a routine of a leader let let, let's just talk about that because i think that would help people to start by doing some of the things that we are suggesting no (laughs) yeah absolutely I, i i think you know that doesn't need to be so hard should be very very simple i mean for 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 myself personally I'm, I will again repeat, the easiest way of living and serving and existing is really serving and existing through unconditional love, unapologetically, mm-hmm. because that's not too much. This is something, Dave, that when I was little, I, I, I remember that I was actually holding and protecting myself of being that love because I was listening all the time that it's not possible to be you know, loving human, that's, this is naivety, you should not be that way. So we are over-conditioned. Mm. So my love challenges needed to teach me to step in, into my authentic self unapologetically and wasn't about, you know, doing good things for others. That never was and been issue or question in my life. Helping animals, serving nature, being conscious, loving others whenever I can. So was the thing that internally myself, I didn't felt and allow myself to give love and love to me. So if justice, something happened in one way, it's overwhelming, can bring anxiety, can bring deep sadness and depression. Mm-hmm. So I needed to learn to balance that and really to step courageously into self-leadership that is also giving of love and, and receiving and giving love to myself and choosing choosing in my leadership when I'm giving love to myself and how I'm making my decisions really from my heart. So there is a, something that I really love to do daily, which is a self-reflection. And as a conscious and aware human being, regularly you're assessing your thoughts, 
your emotions, your feelings, your behavior. And this is what can maintain the self-awareness. So a long time ago, I knew just 10, 15 years ago, I knew just to deny myself because I was living just external life. I wanted to be accepted. I did everything to be approved, uh, overdoing things, never felt good enough, never f- felt that whatever I create that is enough. I judge myself. So once I started to, to dive and to ask myself, what is happening with me? So naturally, when you start to work on yourself and when you're interested to get better, so I don't skip one day actually to not assess myself. W- what I'm saying, what, what was the trigger? Why this trigger me? Why trigger me something that somebody says or did? On which level that trigger me? What are emotions actually arise in that moment? And where first time I learned those emotions in my life? So where I am repressing myself every single day, so remember, if we repress everything, we can just, we cannot express. Mm-hmm. So self-reflection is very powerful. And I will always like to start from there and being very mindful and, and do practices that can bring mindfulness, which is meditation, uh, flow practices, um, breathing practices, absolutely practice. It can really, really bring you into the present moment and into your personal mindfulness of how you are through the day. So you can uh, manage to shift yourself very, very fast. Um, I know that sounds very easy. And I can say once we start really to seriously to work on ourselves and to clear out all this dust that we are repressing for the decades. And I can say that we have reflection of humanity, of the businesses today, which are reflection of that detachment and disconnection from compassion, empathy, kindness, joy, understanding. So when you have those values within you, when you feel them, so this is the true vitality of life. This is the true wealth because you have capacity to create and to make something good, not just for you, but for everybody. Yeah. So you, we are the chain. We are the activators to each other. We know how cells, Dave, there, there is a there is a scientific uh, research done on the mouses, right? How we are carrying the traumas in this life, yeah, under the fourteen generations below us. That's so true. I don't want to take time, but there there is a scientific proof, yeah, that we are already born with the traumas and conditions that our ancestors had. 14 generations below us. And imagine in this life, the first seven years of our life, how conditioned we are. So today, for the decades, I think so that we have the most disconnected humanity that ever before. But because we are in the age of Aquarius, we are experiencing a massive shift. So being mindful, being rooted, doing self-reflection through the day, continuously learning, being open to learn, to ask questions, to self-observe yourself, being active listener, practicing just to sit and to listen to somebody is the most powerful way. And in that listening, actually, we are learning so much about ourselves and about other human being. Mm-hmm. Yes, and so, if we do all of those practices, starting with self-reflection, starting with absolutely. connecting to you, that's where the love 
for everything that you are doing, it's going to come. It's going to yeah. come. And Dave, sorry, just uh, forgive yeah. me, just one more thing. Uh, I need to mention that because I'm somebody who, who 20, year, 20 years was uh, having experience in the fitness industry and somebody who really working deeply on the physical body. So also we need to integrate holistic self-care. Right, mm-hmm. prioritizing physical health and emotional well-being, such also uh, the, the the food we are eating, uh, moving our bodies regularly. Right, doesn't need to be something hard. It can be every day, ten minutes. Right, mm-hmm. but making that space from the space of love and compassion for you and for your future goals, why you want your body to support you. So, so also when we when we prioritizing those, those things also they should be from the space of love for ourselves mm-hmm. not from the space of i i must do it this is because my coach told me this is what society telling me and it's never exist one way for everybody is a different so that's why i'm saying authenticity it's coming from the heart So, yeah, fostering connections. So building and maintaining strong relationships with yourself. With you connecting with with the purpose that you have in your life, connecting with uh, your body, your cells, opening those channels to release those emotions and those traumas from the past. And what you mentioned that is scientifically proven is epigenetics. Everything oh, that yes. happened, everything that happened in the previous generations is passed on in the genes and is passed yeah. on in the marks of the genes and it turns on or turns off certain kind of genes. And eventually that's where you develop either a disease or you heal a disease because you can heal diseases just by letting your heart and your genes to be cleaned to be yeah. uh, repaired and you can reverse the the things aging. that yeah damage aging damage and everything that you um, want <laughs> you can reverse that just by connecting with yourself just by reflecting in your heart and the purpose that you have and that's where it comes from. And that's the birth of the new leaders, I think. No? Yeah, I, I, this subject is is huge. We can speak yeah, yeah. about that I, next 10 years, to be honest. Um, <laughs> how we are in ourselves and how much our bodies are intelligent. So when we really start to go from here a little bit down, I think we can really embrace and experience the full vitality. What can heal us and and bring us up the energy of love, the feeling? It's about the feeling, Mm -hmm. how we feel about ourselves. So from there, we will move that energy when we bring that awareness yeah. and like being a conscious heart center leader is really journey of ongoing growth and self-improvement. So, so this journey will never stop right till we are alive. So mm-hmm. there is always a revolution, no matter on which level of success we are, there is always another level. There is always evolution, but yeah. embracing and accepting your own journey from really space of love and compassion and kindness and gentleness genuinely genuinely from yourself so then when we do that for us so we have capacity to do that for other people and for for our our planet so then Where our are actions students? are so our actions are uh, uh will be from from that space right yeah so it's really about living authentically embracing vulnerability and leading by example in all aspects of life. So for me, if somebody needs to lead me that way, to inspire me and to make me a better human, better person, 
and help me to take out in the powerful way my skills and my talents and my uniqueness. So this is the leader that I will be following. Yeah. And somebody who cares about uh, mm-hmm. environment. So no matter if our businesses are working just for humans, So what we create, we need really to have consciousness that what we are creating actually doesn't damaging our home, which is our planet and animals. So, yeah, I think we can wrap up with that reflection of how a leader is going to impact um, first himself or herself, then the community, the family, then the organization and of course those are the layers that the impact is going to grow if it comes first from reflection first from connecting with himself or herself and then spreading that love into everything that he or she is doing i think that's the powerful message that we can leave for people so that they can reflect on conscious leadership and coming from the heart, which is the next stage that we are going to live. And I'm sure that we are going to witness many, many changes, as you are mentioning, and we are seeing them right now in in terms of the connection that we are creating with people and the velocity also that we are resonating with the same kind of vibration. So thank you. Yeah, Martina. that's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful, David. And I see in every human a massive potential. Um uh, absolutely love um higher self of them. Everybody have that capacity. Everybody can make choice. Um so if we all together don't bring that responsibility of how we are again this is where everything's starting it's starting from us mm-hmm. personally and then collectively right we are like a chain of transmuting energies to each others so let's transmute that vitality that is coming really from the centers of our hearts because we have that capacity we just need to remember really truly who we are on a deep 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 level of our beings so then we can change the world thank you marina (laughs) thank you everyone for listening and uh, of course we are encouraging your questions your reflections and if you like and resonate with this topic and if you know any kind of leader in your own place, in your own family, in your own organization, please just refer to this podcast because they will have, certainly they will have some time to reflect. Thank you. And and listen. And maybe my day, they will make a decision to to think that they can embrace another level or their vitality. So, and wealth. So let's see. Let's stand for that mission of the heart-centered leadership. Thank you. Thank Thank you you. so much. My honor. Bye. Bye.